World War II brought many changes to America. Many people who looked for work throughout the Depression would soon find an abundance of jobs working in this war industry, and Evansville was no exception. World War II would transform Evansville from a developing industrial town to a bustling war machine. Thousands of people flooded in from surrounding towns and villages to fuel the machine. Working almost nonstop, Evansville produced everything from mess kits to ocean-going troop transport ships. One of the biggest contributions to the war effort took to the air. The building of the P-47 Thunderbolts at the Indiana Division of Republic Aviation put Evansville residents to work and put the Nazi and Japanese forces on the run. There's very, very few things you could really spend your money on. You saved it. You bought war bonds with it, which was a good deal. Uh, people made a lot of good money off of war bonds, and they redeemed these in the years after the war. Evansville announced on March 21, 1942, that Republic Aviation would build a plant on the north side of town that would produce New Age fighter planes to send overseas. Many critics found this decision to be ill-advised due to the fact that the newly built LST shipyard would be demanding of a lot of Evansville's available resources. The shipyard would employ over 19,000 people, and Republic Aviation would, at its peak, employ another 8,300. This raised concerns among the people that wondered if Evansville would be able to support the 32,300 needed to run these two plants. On top of that, all of the employees would need to be trained for the part they would play in producing these New Age fighter planes. The Benninghoff Nolan Building, which was east of the new Central Public Library, was the headquarters for the employment office for the aviation plant. It was also used as Republic's training building for sheet metal work, welding, riveting, drafting, and layout. By April 7, 1942, the groundbreaking of Republic started on the main building and offices near the airport. The steel from the building had come from International Steel's inventory, and the plant was made in 50-foot sections. International Steel would also produce sections for the LSTs at the shipyard. The aviation plant was built for the sole purpose of producing P-47 Thunderbolts. The plant took pieces of the plane that were built by local companies and pieced each one together. Several plants here in town was involved in the P-47. Servelle made wing spars and made wings for the P-47 and uh, Chrysler and Briggs, they made ammunition. And Hoosier Lamp and Stamping made the tail sections for it. On September 19, 1942, the first P-47 Thunderbolt, nicknamed Hoosier Spirit, rolled off the line. This plane would be the first of thousands to roll out of the Republic Aviation Plant and into the skies over Europe. Evansville made about half of the P-47s that would be produced for the war effort with the grand total coming to just over 6,200 planes. These cost-effective, nimble planes would help win the war in the skies for the Allied forces. Quite possibly one of the most memorable events at the Republic plant in Evansville was the day President Franklin Delano Roosevelt visited on April 27, 1943. The visit by the President was probably the worst kept secret in Evansville's history. His visit was supposed to be kept secret because censorship requirements forbid any publication of the movements of the president. However, a few days before his arrival, word had spread throughout the city that the president was on his way to Evansville. On April 27, 1943, soldiers awaited the president's arrival in full uniform, some armed with automatic weapons, at the Ellen Inn Railroad track. Crowds started to gather at train stations, bridges, and even the airport, just to get a glimpse of the president. Anticipation rose as each train passed and soldiers would get up and stand in anticipation, hoping that the president would be aboard the train. Finally, at 4.22 p.m., President Roosevelt arrived at the Union Station and then transferred over to the New York Central Line to take him directly to the plant. While at the plant, he was given a tour of the building and was given a brief description of how the plant operated. Four workers were invited to meet with the president in person. While he was there, the president awarded four miniature P-47 model trophies to these employees that were thought to help speed up the process of making the planes. The Republic Aviation Plant in Evansville greatly affected the economy of the city and its surrounding area. The 8,300 people needed to run the plant 
either moved to Evansville or carpooled into the city every day during the war. With the addition of other wartime plants, the city's population swelled from 100,000 to 150,000 people nearly overnight. Many brought mobile homes to serve as temporary housing due to the lack of available housing near the plant. Harold Morgan remembers what life was like living in one of these trailers while his father worked at the Republic Aviation Plant. Dad got a job at Republic Aviation and we moved from Odin to Owensboro. But the commute was so bad. It was just a struggle because all of these people were going from Evansville to Owensboro and Henderson uh, all over. They, Evansville was terribly, terribly crowded as far as the traffic. So Dad was spending much of his day commuting and this just wasn't going to work. Somehow, some way, he found a small trailer by the airport and they rented, they bought the trailer. And that's where we lived until 1947 when lumber again became available to build houses for the public. He was a final tail assembly inspector. There was a little door right, right behind the, the tail wheel of the P-47 and he would open that door and use his flashlight and his mirror and inspect the final construction and assembly of the, the rudder, the, the elevator into the, the fuselage. And if it was okay, he had a little rubber stamp with, a, I think it was the letter M3, Morgan 3. The influx of 76,000 workers coming into Evansville during the war transformed the city from a quiet riverside town into a bustling wartime machine. But everybody was interested in winning. That was the only thing that was important, was to win. And the people actually would have worked for half pay. It wouldn't have mattered because that was the mindset of everybody, to win. In later years, Evansville would continue to expand its metropolitan area as more and more people moved from the city to its suburban areas surrounding Evansville. As the war came to a close, so did the production of P-47s in Evansville. The once bustling plant now stood idle with the surrender of the Japanese Imperial Forces in August of 1945. The plant would officially close on January 4, 1946, just months after World War II ended. Not long after it closed down, the factory would be bought by a company called International Harvester. It would only last for a few years, and once again it would be replaced by a company who still occupies it today, Whirlpool.